आप सभी को मेरा नमस्कार माई नेम इज प्रेरणा एंड आई एम द फाउंडर ऑफ इको फ्लोर ट्रेवल इज समथिंग विच मोस्ट ऑफ आस लाइक टू इंजॉय बट हाउ मेनी अमंग आस एक्चुअली थिंक अबाउट द कार्बन एमिशन विच वी क्रिएट ड्यूरिंग आवर ट्रेवल आई डोंट थिंक वी थिंक अबाउट इट बिकॉज we connect travel to fun to uh, we connect holiday to leisure to comfort and lot of other things uh, while doing all that we don't want to take the responsibility but what if i tell you that you can have one of the best um, travel uh, in close with nature you can create one of the best memories and at the same time you can also contribute in conserving the planet do you know about this fact that tourism adds to almost 8% of the total carbon emission in the entire world and that's huge so to address it we started ecoplore ecoplore is a aggregator of sustainable hotels we aggregate and promote hotels which are made up of local architecture like mud wood bamboo stone or any other local material and all these hotels maintain a minimum of 33% tree coverage inside their campus giving you a glimpse about my personal journey i started as a journalist around um in 2010 with cnn ibn and some other international media houses i did work as an activist in anti corruption movement and politics was one of my dreams so since my school days when i started studying political science i um, wanted to get into politics to bring change and, and i did get a chance for it in 2015 and 16 when uh, the mainstream media especially the tv news channels were getting deteriorated and at the same time there were a lot of internal changes in the political party i was part of so that really uh, made me a little unhappy and unsatisfied and the seed for entrepreneurship was laid at that time so as most of us uh, believe and it is uh, it is commonly believed that uh, you you create something in a creative environment so uh, it was a trip to malaysia which was which we went for after four years of our marriage so you can call it a honeymoon trip and um, it took me almost one month just to find five sustainable eco hotels in malaysia since it was a new country for me it took took me so much time but when i actually stayed in those accommodations the experience was mind blowing the picture which you see on the left hand side it is of a tube hotel where uh, it where they had created the hotel in a concrete pipe and you jump in and there was a bed over there and the moment you jump out there was a sea in front of you so the experience was totally mesmerizing the second picture which you see is of a insect so this insect looks like a um, tree branch or a bark and um, this borneo island in malaysia it had some amazing beautiful insects so that was the first time when these crawling insects looked beautiful to me and it was here that i decided then when i come back to india i will try to create something where i can promote the sustainable hotels so this i talked about in general about promoting sustainability and about promoting eco friendly hotels but how is my own travel sustainable so i'll share a very interesting story last year i uh, while doing a research i came to know that the carbon emission in flight travel is the highest in the world and uh, like every human being is allotted a certain amount of carbon emission which they can emit uh, in a sustainable way in one year of time so if you take a flight from india to us that carbon emission is equivalent to the carbon emission which you are supposed to emit in one year including everything you consume so just imagine how much carbon emit emission we are creating the due to the flights which we are taking whether it is domestic or international so i pledged to myself that i will not take any flights until unless it is a medical emergency 
And it's so funny that uh, me and my husband, we hardly travel together because I love exploring on ground while he likes watching videos and exploring the world on laptops and mobile phones. Uh, we only travel to our in-laws place together. And that too, since last year, I take a train and he takes the flight. So that is a kind of commitment, I think, which at least we who are sitting here, who are committed to climate change, who are committed to uh, bringing a change of, towards the betterment of the climate and the planet should take, at least in their own personal lives. So we got the carbon emission uh, which are emitted by our eco-hotels calculated by a Europe-based agency called No Carbon. And, figure, and we figured out that while our eco-hotels, they emit 9 kg carbon per room per night, a luxury hotel in India emits 1,000 kg carbon per room per night. So the difference between the carbon emission between a luxury hotel, a mainstream hotel, or an average concrete hotel, and an eco-hotel is not this much, but it's actually this much. And it is because uh, the hotels which we promote, they actually follow measures like rainwater harvesting, composting, waste management, they hire local people, they use local resources, they grow their own vegetables, they have their fruit trees, and they follow a lot of other measures which are available in that area. So finally, it is, uh, as somebody was saying, that it is the choice which we make. So the choice is upon us as a consumer that what we choose, whether we choose something which is actually contributing to the depreciation of the planet or which is doing the otherwise. Uh, these are some pictures of the places which I visited while doing my research for EcoPlore. Uh, it is one of our stays located in Jim Corbett. Here, the owner of the, uh, this hotel, he bought a hill and he gave, back, gave it back to nature. So this is the only place in India where a tigress chose to give birth to her cubs around three years back because a tigress chooses only that place which is highly secured. So that is the level of um, forest conservation, wildlife conservation, nature conservation to which there are so many individuals across the country who are working in different parts of the country. This is a place located in Shanti Niketan in West Bengal. And everything here from the almira to the linen to the toiletries to their dining table to the food they source is from their own locality, is from the villages which are located nearby. And that actually reduces a lot of carbon emission because there's no um, transportation involved. Plus the locals are of course getting a lot of employment. So vocal for local is actually being practiced. This is a waterfall. It is, in, uh, it is located in our stay in Kodai Canal, Tamil Nadu. So um, till now I was talking about the different measures of sustainability. Let me just give you some insight on the fun which you can have at these places. So a lot of our properties are located in 100 acres of land, in 200 acres of land, and even 300 and 350 acres of land. And the construction is in less than 5%. And some of these locations even have waterfalls and rivers inside the campus. So it is not just about taking responsibility. It is actually going close to nature, understanding it, and having the fun of your life. COVID crisis, we cannot forget. Tourism was the most affected industry. A lot of companies shut down. But personally, um, the environmentalist part of me was very happy during COVID because uh, I'm talking about holidays. We all want to go on holidays because we want to take a break from the regular life which we are leading. So actually the planet, the nature, took a break from the constant human destruction which was happening on it. So it was the first time while living in Delhi, I could see the blue skies, I could see the stars in the sky, I could see the Yamuna River being clean, which we could never imagine, like after putting in so much money into that. I could see birds, I could see like Nilgai near my house. So those were the changes which happened magically because the human destruction reduced, there was a break on that. 
And this actually turned into an opportunity for our venture also, because a lot of people were sitting inside their houses, uh, locked inside their houses actually, and they wanted, they realized the value of nature. And there were many queries coming to us saying that um, we want to build a sustainable house in our village land. Or we have a land here and want, we want to construct something which is eco-friendly. So uh, we never thought that we will get into sustainable construction because it took me a lot of time to, uh, to get myself into the shoes of a real estate builder. But finally, like um, around three to four months back, we finally decided that we will get into sustainable construction because uh, it was actually creating a huge impact. If we could replace a concrete building with a sustainable building, uh, we will reduce the carbon emission at that very place. This mud house which you see here, it's, uh, it's my dream home and I live here now. So I want to end my journey by sharing with you the dreams which I saw in my life and which actually got accomplished. So uh, just on my last birthday uh, in 2022, uh, I saw the, this mud house in 2015 when I visited here for my journal, journalistic project. And the first glimpse I had of that place was that this is the house I want to live in. It was just a dream which I had manifested. I never thought it will ever come true because it was a private home of India's renowned mud architect. They were pioneers in mud architecture, Revti Kamath and Vasant Kamath. And it was their private home. They were living there. They lived there for 25 years. So I, I could never imagine that I can take that place. And it's a, pri it's a priceless thing. But um, something happened. And uh, last year, I got um, we took over this place. And now it has been open for day visits. It is located near Suraj Kund in Faridabad. So if any of you is interested in learning more about sustainable living and seeing it in front of you, how it actually happens. Because we, we read about it, we see videos, but when we experience something in practice, that is when we actually get connected to it. So this house, for instance, 80% of the building material is from the campus itself. Um, it was constructed in a year's time by you, uh, with 50 artisans uh, living over there. It's, it follows circular economy. There's no connection with municipal corporation of that area. There's no connection with the sewage treatment plant, uh, with the sewage pipes of that area actually. And it is the only place where I, I, I have access to drinking water directly from the tap. In Delhi, can you imagine you can just open your tap and drink that water? So that is what we do here and you can come and experience this. So uh, the first dream which I had manifested was during my school days when, when we all start exploring the world gradually and we think of our career and what we want to do in life. So I wanted to get into politics that I mentioned earlier and I actually uh, did that. I worked with a political party very, very closely and, and I chose not to continue for my own reasons. Uh, the second dream which I manifested was this house which I could never think of living in, but today I am living over there. And finally, the next dream which I have for myself is to, as it was told in the introduction, that my next dream is to buy a minimum of 100 acres of land and give it back to nature, rewild it, uh, make it a dense forest. And I'm, I can see that happening very, very soon. So we don't need to plan for things, I believe. We just need to see dreams see big dreams and see it with pure intention and a pure heart. So I want to just end with one um, question from everybody that after listening to this talk, how many of you before planning your next holiday, because holidays are very common now, we all go for holidays almost every month, uh, while planning your next holiday, you will be a little mindful about the carbon emission or the ways or the choices of travel which you will be making. If you, uh, if you decide to be mi mindful, I want you to switch on your uh, mobile torches and raise your hand if you believe in that. If not, it's completely fine. Thank you so much.